But I just gotta know one thing. Are you ready? No, I said, are you ready? <laughs> Hello there. Alright, so a few things that I want to do in today's stream, although not really as long of a list as I had in the last one. Um, I want to do defense drill again. I think that I can get a little bit further. You're not ready? Oh. <laughs> this song. Alright, I uh, just finished a training session for SOP 2 and AR-15. They're level 8. Uh, no skills now. I'm about to have a logistics come in. But yeah, I actually unlocked fairy production as well. So I want to do that. But let's set up for defense drill first, I guess. Although... Um... What are the lengths of these logistics? I'm gonna have to pull one of these off. I guess I'll pull Echelon 3 off of logistics again. So let's set these up, these squads up for another defense drill run. any great uh, off tank set up yet. I would do the fairy production before defense drill except that it actually doesn't matter at all. Because you can't use fairies on defense drill. I got a, a gold exo actually. Well one of each type. So that's cool. Can't equip the gold one yet because not uh, level 60. Still no gold armor plate, unfortunately. Let's do a similar setup to what I had last time. Uh, Do I really not have any more crit scopes available? Guess not. My equipment stores are rather lacking. 
but there's something. <laughs> Anyways, I think that I can at least get past where I was in defense drill. That was only my first attempt. And I would have done it once since then, but I didn't actually attempt to clear any more waves. I just, like, started and then immediately ended to get the the base calibration tickets from that. Uh, is this wave a armored wave? Oh, it literally tells you! I never noticed that before. It says right there, armor. <laughs> that would be good to know. <laughs> Oh, this squad layout is wrong. Uh, I don't think that I can edit it. Oof. Um. Does this work? No. I mean, this. Yeah, this. <laughs> The tile buffs are wrong. Springfield over... like, Lemming, I guess? Maybe. It would have been better if I arranged this squad correctly, that's for sure. Oh, also, I didn't put night battle equipment on my ARs, did I? So this is... Gonna be a mess. Pretty sure that if you like kill the app and come back for while you're in the middle of a defense drill, it will not let you like edit your squads or anything. Okay, so now we're switching to unarmored. Oh, and it's daytime. Okay, so that works well, actually. Because I do not have night battle equipment on these. So I'll probably be able to get that checkpoint anyways, despite totally messing up my second squad. Another thing that I want to do in this episode later on is actually use the furniture that I pulled in the last episode. It's like, I did a bunch of gacha pulls, but then I never actually edited my dorm. Hmm, my SMGs are still taking pretty heavy damage. I probably could have been, like, kiting better. I think I can still clear this wave. There we go. Got the checkpoint. That was the entire goal. So. And I'll see how much further I get, but probably not very far. Oh, 
better starting point for defense drill. Um, let's make this squad uh, make more sense. Also, let's do a fairy craft. Ooh, new Tito. It's Bamas, who is kind of notoriously bad. Well, specifically all the T-Dolls with that skill are notoriously bad. Um, so, the high explosive grenade skill does like different damage amounts within different areas. Except that the damage that it does within the smallest area is still really mediocre compared to, like, the regular Grenadiers, and that area is pretty small, so, like, they're just kind of awful in general. For them to be viable, they would have to do a lot more damage within each area. Yeah. Like, her design is pretty cool, it's just that <laughs> all the T-Dolls with that skill just suck. Because, for whatever reason, they didn't balance it very well. <sighs> okay, so I do have a decent chunk of dummy cars right now. Which is good, because you actually need dummy cores to do fairy crafts. So, uh, actually, let me pull up the wiki page for this. I don't think that the recommended recipes for fairies are that useful. I mean, these are potentially recipes that you might use, but they don't really tell you much. So, here's the wiki page. So, most of the fairies that you would want, including all of the combat fairies, you can get from the base fairy recipe. 500 is the minimum that you can spend on this. So, that is generally what you want to do. Mainly, the only one that you care about that you can't get from that recipe is Parachute Fairy. Parachute Fairy is, like, the best fairy in the game. But you can only get it from a more expensive recipe, and it's pretty rare. So generally what you do for Parachute Fairies is just get as many as you want, and then not worry about getting duplicates to enhance them. Whereas for most of the other fairies, you want to enhance them with duplicates of the same type, because it's a lot cheaper than using other types. So, for now, I'm not going to worry about getting Parachute Fairies, I just want to get, like, any of these Combat Fairies, basically. So, I'm going to do some productions. This is a Fairy of some sort. That is Twin Fairy. Not bad. And I believe they automatically give me a command fairy just for doing that as well. Yep. So then... 
You equip fairies onto your squads like this, and they provide like a buff to your stats. There's like five different stats they can buff, so I think accuracy is the one that this one doesn't buff. So it's like damage, crit damage, evasion, armor, and accuracy are the different aura buffs that they can have. And that applies similarly to tile buffs. It will just like multiply those stats for all of your T dolls in the squad. And then they'll also have skills. So Command Fairy's skill is good for XP farming, but mostly Command Fairy is just used as a stat stick for her buffs because they're pretty good. Also, fairies are actually just like drones, and then they're like characters are projected holograms. And then, uh, let me show you how the fairy enhancement works. I think like 20 might be the first breakpoint or something. Anyways, uh, fairies earn XP with your squad in combat. So the way that you farm XP on them is just by using them in combat, but they also get XP from combat reports rather efficiently compared to T-Dolls, so raising them with combat reports is often a good way to do it. So now, If I go to Fairy Enhancement, I don't have any other fairies, but you enhance them with other fairies, and if they're duplicates of the same type or the same talent, then they are more efficient compared to just other fairies of random types. And that's how you raise their star level, with all, which also increases their aura and their talent activation rate. Also, I probably now have the fairy room that I can go into. Fairy chamber. Yes, indeed. So, to use the fairy skills, you need fairy command, which I like to call fairy dust, because it's a much cooler name. And that is like basically a type of energy that regenerates over time, and is used up by fairy skills. So, if you max out the fairy room, then it goes up to 200 and regenerates faster compared to what it does currently. And then leveling up this makes your fairies get XP faster. Yeah, I like to call it Fairy Dust. It's technically called Fairy Command, but I think that name is kind of dumb. So now, in addition to spending batteries on the forward base camp, I want to spend it on the Fairy Room. Actually, I think that my forward base camp is leveled up enough now, because I can put 5T Dolls on here and use the 8-hour one, although I haven't put a 5th T Doll in it yet. So there's two more levels on this gate console, but I don't think I need to worry about those yet. So for now, I probably want to dump all the batteries into leveling up the fairy room until it's maxed out. Another thing about fairy crafting is that that's going to use the same equipment contracts that I'm spamming to try and get a gold armor plate. 
Although you can get gold equipment from fairy crafting as well, when you don't get fairies. But... Because I forget what the fairy drop rate is, but you have a relatively low chance of getting fairies. And then you'll get, like, equipment the rest of the time. And, like, you might get, like, decent equipment from it, but mostly it's just, like, a byproduct of trying to craft fairies. Alright. Yeah, another thing that I was going to do is edit my dorm. Yeah, let's upgrade the limit. I don't want to upgrade all this stuff. Hey. So... Do I have any... Like, set bonuses, maybe? Is this enough for a set bonus? I think that is enough for a set bonus. Yeah. Cool. And then I will stick in a bunch of other furniture. Do I have any, like, walls or floors? Doesn't look like it. Oh, okay. Not in here. Okay. There you go. Now I have a boring gray floor. Hmm. Mostly my goal here is just to get the... I do have some set bonus here. I don't have, like, the full set bonus for that. But I have a partial, at least, so it does give me some bonus. So the way that, like, dorm comfort works is just, like, putting whatever furniture in your dorm can get you up to 10,000 comfort. But then past that limit, you can get up to 3,000, or I think you can get up to 5,000 from a set bonus if it's, like, a five-star furniture set, which you can get some of those from events as well. But, and then once you have like the maximum amount of set bonus points, you can also get 3,000 more from pets, which is just like having three pets in the dorm. So for now, I'm mostly just trying to stick in enough random stuff to get to the uh, Get to the, like, 10,000. I don't really have enough furniture to make a coherent theme yet, so it's just whatever. Alright, not quite there. Random AK-12. There, I've got AK-12 in a fence guarding this. <laughs> so, at the moment I have 10,000 plus 2,000 from a set bonus. And then on the second dorm I can do something similar. Or just shove in as much stuff as possible. I don't think I have any other sets that I could get any sort of set bonus from. I 
I do that? No, I don't have enough of those that aren't like in use elsewhere. That's a wallpaper. That is a weird looking wallpaper. Because it looks like it actually has like stuff on the wall, but it doesn't. Is that like a P7? <laughs> I think that's like a gremlin p7 drawn on that blackboard i've never noticed that before gotta have sofas and beds i don't think i have many beds besides like the default box ones Might need to just like shove literally all of the furniture that I have in here to get close to 10,000. I was playing Arknights, I used to do that, where I would just literally jam as much furniture as possible into my dorms. <laughs> How many refrigerators do you need? If I put this, like, over here, I'm <laughs> gonna look super dumb. <laughs> But, whatever. I think that's supposed to be put at, like, ground level, so it makes more sense. Yeah, that's basically all of the furniture except for like the two star starter ones. That's a couch, apparently. Okay. <laughs> Didn't quite get to 10,000, but got somewhere. So let's go to uh, fairy room, start something else upgrading there. Alright, that's pretty much all of the housekeeping stuff I wanted to do. So I guess I'll do some more story missions. Now that I have a fairy, that should buff my team up a little bit. 18,000 CE. Mark 23! Wait, what is this? Right, very important. I have to set something on two as the leader. Oh yeah, uh, the 
auto scale is on by default, which I might as well use my XP generating skill, get more XP. I think in this case, uh, going two tiles out rather than trying to spawn a second squad on the first team is the right play to avoid the enemy is getting too much territory surrounded. Although, then I only have two action points, so that's... What's new, T-Dolls? have enough to deploy a regular squad there and move it and move this squad. That's why I wanted to do is to use a support echelon there. again this week or something. I haven't looked at those at all. Are they actually like in the game now or are they just like announced to be coming? Command post. Oh, so there are, are they like new ones in the old servers that aren't on EN yet? Or are they ones that have been out for a while and are coming to EN soon?
Ooh, we're getting Dutchkin mod. And stun mark too. I'm not really to the point where I'm ready to mod anyone yet on this account, but eventually that'll be nice. a command post on the first train. So I'll do that. So they just came out in the Elder servers, is what happened. Okay. I don't usually pay much attention to any T dolls that aren't out in EN yet. You don't take my command post. Actually, how about I take your command post? Yeah, if I capture the enemy command post outright before mine gets around captured, then I win. So, don't need to worry about defending mine in this case. Oh. 
こんにちは、シキさんさん。遅いよ、ダーリン。今日は何するの何でもいいよ。I'm actually running kind of low on quick repair tickets, I just noticed. I only have 18. So maybe I'll have to worry about that at some point. Um, probably done with whatever I was upgrading in the fairy chamber, so I can upgrade something else. Gotta do enhancement. I'm almost to the point where I have everybody enhanced. Except for the ones that are on logistics. And then with any excess two stars, I'll just retire. Yeah, I don't think I want to raise MG42. Saving some duplicates of those other three stars because I might want to use them for dummy links. So I should explain the, how like fairy production works basically. Effectively it's just like a sink for resources and cores and any excess resources you have you just always want to be dumping into fairy production because it takes a lot of fairies to make like a five star one and they're very good to have. So like usually what I will do on my main account is anytime my resources are above the soft cap, I will just dump resources into fairy production to keep it below the soft cap. So I'll probably take a similar strategy to that here. That's kind of like the ultimate resource sink. Is like if you're not using your resources for anything else, you should use them for fairy production. Although having enough uh, equipment contracts is also a concern. In this case, this first timer that was a twin fairy. It was like 440 originally. Uh, let me pull up the equipment production page again. Barrier is 415, but I started this one like half an hour ago, so it was 440 when it started. Aha! Uh -huh. This map is actually notable in that it is one of the best ways to farm, like, uh, I forget what the term, I think it's like normal machine is the type of enemy that denigrates are considered. So if you ever want to farm those kills for like a weekly quest or whatever, this is the easiest place to do it. Because you've got this dinner gate stack that you can just easily jump onto. This can also be used if you want to farm the hunt rankings to be like whoever got the most kills. I don't know if I've ever gone over the there are different types of ranking, but there's like five normal types of ranking, 
and then there's a sixth type that will show up whenever there is an active event, and that's the only one that really matters, in my opinion. Uh, I'll explain what all the different ranking types are. Basically, enemy hunting is a measure of how much you play the game, because it is, like, literally how many enemies you've killed. And this will only count, like, red enemies. If you ever run into, like, third-party enemies, they don't count. And Yonio is a guy in my Discord server. So, yeah, he is also a Mega Whale, as you'll discover in one of the later rankings. I had Oath P7 on my friend list at one point, but I don't think I do anymore. Uh, T Doll Collection. If you look at the, the right side here, you'll see everybody in the T Doll Collection ranking has exactly the same amount of T-Dolls. It's all of them. So, like, basically every time new T-Dolls are released, these rankings get switched up by whoever can collect the T-Dolls the fastest. So every time new T-Dolls drop, whoever gets them the fastest gets on this ranking. And actually, if you look at the, like, timestamp here, everybody in this list got them within, like, the first few minutes. Well, if you go further down the list, it took them, like, a whole nine hours. No, it was, like, one day for the ones at the very bottom of the list. It was one day later. Basically, if you get to the maximum t -doll collection fast enough, then you get on this ranking until it changes again. Data sampling... That requires, like, specialized teams to get to the top of these. I wonder if the current top rank one is, like, some kind of cheating. Th that has been an issue in the past of people, like, cheating the data rankings. And all the other ones are 20 seconds, or not 20 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds. This one is 0 0.13, which seems suspiciously fast compared to all the other ones. Yeah, same here. How is this 0.2? And the rest are much higher. But yeah, you have to use like really weird specialized teams to get to the top of the data rankings and get lucky with crits. So that one is like a test of how much you care about data rankings, basically. <laughs> uh, defense drill. That is literally never changed since a few months after the server came out because there are only 109 defense drill waves and they have never added any more. So until they add any more defense drill waves, this is literally a ranking of the first 100 people ever to clear defense drill on the EN server. And it hasn't changed since. So this guy, Hoxie, has literally been the top of the defense drill rankings since, like, barely after the server opened. And it's gonna stay there forever unless they actually add more defense drill waves. And then we have the whale rankings. So this is a collect a measure of, like, how many furniture you have. And the top, like, six people here have literally every type of furniture in the game. So that's ridiculous. Also, Yonio is on this ranking again. So, Mega Whale. <laughs> like that means that every time a new furniture gacha comes out or furniture from events, they always get it. And yeah, if you go down the rankings, it does drop off pretty fast and people who got like all the furniture the top six have all of them, then like a few have like almost all of them, but then it drops off and then you have like smaller whales. Yeah, uh, I can't visit his dorm right now. Is he on the friend list for this account? I don't think he is. On my main account, he's on my friend list. 
But yeah, he has some ridiculous number of oaths too. So, Super Mega Whale. Also, in like, Singularity, I think it was Singularity. Anyway, in one of the rankings, he got number one on the event ranking, which I forgot to mention that. The event ranking is a measure of like, how well you can do on an event ranking map. So that's literally a measure of, like, how well you can play the game, compared to all the other ones, which aren't really. So... The event ranking is the one that I would consider the most prestigious. And he ranked number one on one of the events, where I also ranked in, like, the top five. But I was communicating with him about the... the strat on Discord, so we were using a similar strat as well. Also, he had already gotten a 5-star Parachute Fairy at that point. <laughs> because Mega Whale. So yeah, if you're farming Hunt Ranking, then this map can be a good way to do that, actually, because you have that huge dinner gate stack that you can quickly farm. Although doing like 8-1-N or before that 6-3-N is also a good place for it. Uh, at one point Yonio was the top of the hunt ranking and he was literally just like farming as many kills as possible without really caring about getting useful stuff from the farming. <laughs> That was on 6-3-N at that point, because I don't think 8-1-N was out yet. So he was literally just, like, running 6-3-N with the minimum possible squad, just for kills. Not even farming XP. I think on the Japan server... The people that are the top on the hunt ranking were farming this map. At least at that point. I don't know if they're still doing that. But yeah, <laughs> if hunt ranking is like kind of a mad lad ranking, most of those ones are either like ranking how much of a mad lad you are or like, how quickly you were able to get somewhere. But the event ones, for like, ranking maps, measure more of how good you are at the game. Yeah, I'm definitely taking significant damage from these levels. Yeah, I really like this game. I would say that it is probably still one of my favorite games, although I don't really like the recent content as much as the stuff that they started out with. Let's just go for the command post. Probably have been taking longer than I needed to anyways so far on this map. Because the command post is right there. Oh, I just realized this day, uh, stream title is wrong. It's like day 10 now. Of this account. <laughs> I forgot to update at the start of the stream. I think 10 is right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and this game, like, the beginning story of it, I would say is probably the best video game story that I have, like, played through. Yeah, I do have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing, so I was able to get my squads relatively strong relatively quickly. When I started out on my first account, I was not nearly as efficient. Alright, one minute until that comes back. At some point, I should also go back and do a bunch of gold medals on maps that I have cleared previously. Maybe that'll be a project for the next stream. Alright, let's also start some regular tea doll production going. Yeah, one map in particular that is kind of a pain in the earlier uh, story events. Uh, I think it's... Oh, it's an Operation Cube. It's like the fourth Operation Cube map. I don't know. It's one of the Operation Cube maps where you have to find Ouroboros and she spawns in random positions. Someone made a tool to find her. Uh, is this link still active? No, oh, it's gone. I bet somebody hosted it somewhere. Aha! Here's an active version of it. Okay, so <laughs> you literally like mark on here where you see red on the map, and then it will tell you where Ouroboros is. <laughs> so you don't have to like stumble around in the dark. So when you're playing through that map, you can use that. And the the weirdest like the worst part about that is that uh, like 5-7, who is a very sought-after T-Doll whose event ex drop exclusive. The first map that she was ever available on was that map. So, <laughs> you had to farm 5-7, you had to find Ouroboros in the dark. Just randomly somewhere around there. Uh, ever since then, they've had her, like, 5-7, available like every other event. They just keep rerunning her. Actually, I think she's she's available as a drop in the current event from one of the further ones, but I haven't done it all at all on this account. But yeah, 5-7 is very good. And you can only get her from events, but it's like basically every other event. They just have 5-7 available again. Maybe it'll be like every three events now, because there are other event exclusive dolls that they could do instead. Alright, another two minutes until this comes in. So I'll probably just wait for that. Yeah, as for keeping like main T dolls that you stick with. That's definitely something that would be better for starting out. Like basically when you're starting out, 
it's good to know which T dolls are the ones that you want to use for corpse dragging, especially, and focus on raising those. So for me, I invested heavily into AR-15 and Sopmon 2 and made them my corpse dragon carries. But if you have another good grenadier besides Sopmon 2, you could use them as the second carry instead of AR-15. And then you also want to raise M16 if you can get an armor plate for her. And otherwise, using a shotgun as the tank is an alternative. You get all the AR team members from clearing through the story. So, SUP mod, AR-15, M4, M16, and then later RO-635. You get all of them from, like, clearing through the story. And you can use support echelons to help with that if your squads aren't strong enough. I might end up doing some of that in this chapter if my teams aren't strong enough. Yeah, so everyone is guaranteed to have the two carries that I'm using currently, although there's a pretty good chance that you'll have a better Carp's Dragon carry than AR-15, because she's kind of mediocre at it compared to a Grenadier. AR-15 is still really good for general use, though. He's just not as good for Corpse Dragon as Sopmod. Or another Grenadier. like yeah this will take two turns but I think I can just do that yeah Caleb and Fell are both good ones either one of those would be a good choice along with Sop mod uh, 416 is also good for it And then once you have a Corpse Dragon setup that works well, then you can raise basically whatever you want to make good high-level teams. Although, it depends how much time you put into it. That's the thing about the core gameplay of this game, is you get stuff out of it proportional to how much time you put in. So if you do a bunch of grinding, then you make a bunch of progress. And I like that about it. But a lot of the stuff that they've introduced later on is not so much like that. It's more time-gated. I might get trolled by an enemy spawn on that random node, and then I'll run out of ammo. But yeah, part of the reason why I was able to progress so fast on this account is, besides knowing what I'm doing, also putting in a decent amount of grinding between each of the streams. Although I've tried to show, like, the grinding method that I use, so that if you're following along you can use that. All the VODs for the previous streams are posted on YouTube. My YouTube account is the same name as my Twitch account, so it's easy to find. And there's also timestamps on the YouTube videos to like skip between the sections. So you could follow along with that for starting a, a new account as well. Oh. 
Alright, so I did not get trolled by a random enemy spawn. Uh, later on, especially when you run into like events where they have a lot of random nodes, the random nodes have like a 50% or better chance of being an enemy every time. So there was a meme about calling them ambush nodes instead of random nodes. Uh, I wonder if I can find... Like... I think at one point there was like a... An actual like meme made about that but definitely like referring to them as ambush nodes was something that was commonly done <laughs> at least on my discord server because there's like a very high chance of them being an ambush but that doesn't really apply to the earlier levels it's mostly for events and like maybe later story content I think early on most of the random nodes you come across have a either a very low chance of an ambush or a zero chance of an ambush. This is kind of a weird map layout. Because there's lots of maps that are there's like several maps that are laid out like this, but then you have a helipad up here, so you can just go right across. But this one, you don't. So you actually have to go diagonally across. <laughs> but I'll cap this helipad first turn. I'm going to have to actually defend my command post in this case. I think I'll use a support echelon to make it easier. Here I should be able to just go for the for the enemy command post. And I might as well go this way. Me, 
見つけたぶっちゃえ指揮官私なら彼女たちを超えられるでしょうか Yeah, according to Ionio's current dorm message, he has 490 oaths. I guess he ran out of stuff to spend his gems on. Also, his dorm has, like, gold bars stacked all over it and piles of money. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think he has that many Mark 23s. Not as many as I do. Maybe. Um, of course, the number one hunt ranking guy, both P7, has a whole bunch of P7 oaths. I don't think he's on my friend list anymore, so I don't know if I'd be able to check easily. Yeah, because I went to inactive for like a couple of months, and I think he unfriended me at that point. Which is fair enough, because I used to do that as well, unfriend anyone who was inactive. I can actually show you how to do that. So, like anyone who is on the rankings, you can find them and look at their dorm. So I'll show you how you can do that. Go to the rankings, and then if you click on them, it will show you their UID. So I'm going to make it easy to remember. Just grab a snip of that. And then you go to add friend. You can search by UID. And then visit dorm. 123 P7 <laughs> Allegedly. But I'm assuming that he's telling the truth there. He literally changed his name to Oath P7. So there's that. There's like a name changing feature. So, if you have name change cards, you can change your name. So, yeah, he used to have a different name. And I do know what it is, but I'm not going to say, it, I guess. But, yeah, he changed his name to Oath P7. Likewise, one of my other GFL friends changed his name to Sotmod 2.
Yeah, I have a name change card on my main account that I just haven't used. I kept it named after my YouTube channel and Twitch channel. That's the username that I use for basically everything. So, am I going to be able to do this fight? Maybe. <laughs> That was basically the same CE that I have on my squad. So that's a strong maybe. I guess let's just try the standard route on this map and see if I can do it. If not, I can always use a support echelon to make it easier. Yeah, I was also on the hunt rankings at some point, but not near the top. And then, ever since, like, 10.4e came out, and I wasn't doing as much grinding on maps that actually contributed to hunt ranking, then I dropped down off of the list. So, in 10.4e, all the enemies that you're fighting are third party. They aren't red enemies, so they don't count at all. You literally get no kills on 10.4e as far as hunt ranking is concerned. Yeah, and then besides my CE being basically the same as the boss, it's going to be reduced a little bit by having to take fights before I get even get there. So we'll see if I can take this boss fight. Yeah, it has more CE than me. No, bully me, Alchemist. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get it. Not bad. Yeah, Alchemist is a fairly straightforward boss to fight. You don't have to worry about weird shenanigans. Alright, so now I unlocked chapter 7, including chapter 7 logistics. Which I might want to do. I might want to do like 7 2. Let's see what my logistics spreadsheet says. What attempt to retreat? I might actually want to worry about quick repair tickets, I guess? So, I now have access to all of these logistics. I think... I definitely want parts to be a high priority still. My manpower is almost as high as the other resources, so maybe... I will 
Like, just set it to super high parts priority and everything else is kind of whatever. But then I still want equipment tickets. And... Maybe quick repair tickets? Are there any ones that give quick repair tickets and parts? Doesn't look like it. Not not in any significant number. If I want more quick repair tickets, I could always do like this one or something. But I think I won't plan on it for now. I'll just plan on doing the best parts missions. I don't want to do one that's only half an hour. So... Let's... I think... Yeah, so none of those Chapter 7 ones are actually any better. For my current purposes. Once I get to some of the later chapters, then I'll get, like, 8-2 will be really good for my current priorities. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today's stream. I covered the stuff that I wanted to and made some story progress. So probably in the next one, I'll go back and get some more gold medals and see if I can get another echelon slot or something. Because there's a whole bunch of gold medals that I've missed. Yeah, like all of these ones. I wasn't really paying attention to gold medals in chapter six either, so I didn't get any of those. Yeah, that'll be something to do at some point, get more gems. Anyways, I think that's it for today. I'll catch you guys in the next one.